Welcome to Ari the Stag. Now in this video I'm going to show you a rather unusual engine problem that's not well known about but has raised its ugly head again this week from one of our viewers down in Australia and I thought it worthy of airing it again just to alert people to watch out for it and what to listen out for when you hear this rather horrendous noise and I'll show you what that sounds like in a little while but let's face it and let's go back to the early 1970s and despite all the media hype of the launch of this fantastic looking car it was fraught with problems as we all know and we had some notorious engine issues that ultimately I think led to the demise of a car in 1977 when it finished production. Thrown out of the US for unreliability and also the UK at a later date and finished earlier than expected here in Britain largely because of its untried and untested V8 engine when there were other options that could have been used. As it was they decided on the Saab Slant 4 engine that could be adopted to uh, be made into a V8 as was widely spoken about at the time the Dolomite Sprint engine uh, allegedly was two engines welded together to make it into a V8 all was fraught with problems uh, in lots of different ways including the main bearings that just weren't up to the job but uh, we can discuss all of that another time as to why Triumph never really went to go for the Rover V8 plant which again was tried tested and proven and under BL a sister division that could have easily provided the power plant for the Triumph stack who knows what the future would have held for the mark had that been the case and on that engine it was a very proven engine a reliable power plant and proven down many many years but this video is not about that and we can't change that decision now anyway but the fact is there were a number of issues with these engines anything from oil leaks to crankshaft wear that we've already alluded to from the fact we had two uh, inline fours joined together effectively uh, the timing chains were problematic which used to stretch and still do if you're not looking after them between 25 and 30,000 miles depending on how you drive it and of course if they break uh, or they skip a tooth then that's when you get valves interfering with cylinders which isn't a very good thing um, obviously ends up in disaster for the engine um, corrosion between the two metals of the engine block and the cylinder heads made of aluminium by very nature uh, have a kind of um, a catalytic effect and start to corrode and without the right mix of antifreeze contained within the engine block which must be very carefully worked out then again you get uh, sediment forming and everything else which clogs up the waterways and then causes overheating. Uh, we had dodgy water pumps so 12 vein is the preference these days from the 6 vein that where the cars were manufactured with and indeed poor sighting of the expansion tank in the engine bay which largely when the cars were made were mounted at the base uh, of the engine bay rather than on top and there are conversions now that you can get to uh, overcome that such that the level is a lot higher and of course flat pistons at one stage the early cars came out with flat pistons as opposed to domed ones the flat pistons were all to do with complying with the US emissions regulations that caused the car to run hotter than normal and again compounded with everything else that we've talked about raised the issue of overheating and the car uh, not performing in the way that it should and back to the dealership and of course as well to think about are the uh, aluminium heads uh, but the very nature of the fact they have studs and fixing bolts uh, angled at different angles which was great for manufacturing when you were building these units such that they could be put onto the engine block in a satisfactory way. Actually when the car heated up and cooled down they uh, heated and cooled, expanded and contracted at different rates and thus caused problems with water and uh, overheating once again. So it's easy to see just how many problems there were within the car and there's a rather unknown one which I'll put in here for old time's sake because it's one that again very few people know about but actually during the manufacturing process sand can you believe it was left in the blocks during the casting process which uh, was a cause of many a head gasket going and blowing uh, largely because of the uh, hot spots that that would cause and indeed when we did our uh, yellow stag and the engine there we did still find 
uh, sand in that block and this was 50 years after the car had been made so it was still causing potentially problems. In fact when we had the car we actually had the heads off as you may know we bought it like that. Uh, trouble was whenever a Triumph Stag presented itself with uh, gasket, uh, head gasket problems which is largely what the consequence of that um, sand in the block was then the dealership simply fixed the head gasket and sent you on your way and reportedly a number of owners went back and forward to dealerships time and again getting head gaskets replaced when clearly the dealerships unbeknown to them and you can't blame them either uh, just were not changing over the issue which was the sand in the block they were just changing the head gasket so treating the symptom and not the cause now as promised at the start of this video we've had another engine related issue crop up this week and it comes from Mal who is based down in Australia. He has a 1977 Mark II Triumph Stag in a beautiful red and is based down in New South Wales, Australia as I mentioned and he wrote in because he'd been having some problems he thought with timing chains and it's a very common issue this and we also thought the same when we had this issue and he changed over the chains and the sprockets and done all of that work on the front of the engine but the noise was still present so having done all of that work that noise was still there and asked if there were any ideas let's just take a listen to the problem and you'll hear exactly what he means Now I'm sure like me having heard that you'll have thought the absolute worst it was a most horrendous noise and you'd think that the uh, whole engine was about to explode or disintegrate before your very eyes and I can imagine how Malcolm must have felt having done all that work and then still found that graunching noise still going on. Um, in fact I wrote back because there is an easy fix it's the torque control or viscous coupling unit at the front of the engine. Um, the fan blades are basically bolted to it and it allows for a fast turn at the start uh, when your engine may be uh, running hot and then as the engine revs increase it um, feathers effectively using some clever fluid technology at the center of the hub and we did a video on this uh, in more fuller detail which I'll put at the end so if you want to click on that at the end and go back and have a look at the issue um, I think you'll see what the problem was and it's a very common one as I mentioned and it, there is an easy fix which I think when um, you know you know what it is then it's an easy one to do cost you about 70 quid from James Paddock to get a replacement and um, sorts the job and for all of you stag owners out there who regularly get dissed by the uh, label that this is the Triumph snag not the Triumph stag because of these engine problems well here are some facts and data to set you free of the 25,877 stags that were ever made between 1970 and 1977 6,780 of those went for export 2,871 went to the USA there are still well over 46 percent of those cars still on the road uh, now 50 years down the line from when they were first built plus lots of others that are known about in barns or on thorns and whatever Interestingly enough, I did some digging, and as at July 17, which I appreciate is a few years ago, 91% uh, of all stags have V8 engines. Some of those might be the V8 Kent or other derivatives, it's hard to say, but 91% are the uh, V8 version variant, which is really good. Uh, one or two inline sixes from the Triumph 2000s and whatever. 2.5s and really interesting that uh, we have regular reports of people driving these cars around the world doing huge mileages all across Europe across Australia across the US with absolutely no problems yes they have to look after them maintain them look after them and so on but that's no different to any other car and to know that uh, there's over 46 percent of these cars that were ever made still running actively today two or three generations down the track I think is 
amazing. So in summary, to all those naysayers out there who diss the Triumph Stag saying it's a rubbish car with engine problems and it was never worth buying, I disagree. And with all of those quality control issues now largely sorted with things like Supergirl radiators, electric fans where you want them, uh, 12 vein pumps, water pumps where you need them, and turret mounted expansion tanks and alarms to let you know when the water level is low, as well as uh, serviceable parts including timing chains and everything else. Not forgetting of course the viscous fan and the uh, torque control unit uh, to keep your ears open for that and hopefully Mal has now been sorted. In fact I know he has, it's purring like a kitten so he says since this video was made so that's brilliant news. There you go guys, enjoy your Triumph Stag, it's a world class car and I think it's going to go on for many decades to come. Enjoy it and have fun with it and that's all that we ever dream to do when we're sharing the classic dream so thanks for watching subscribe to see more from us as and when it comes out feel free to click on the link here to see the fuller video on the viscous coupling unit and we'll see you online on Ari the stag very soon feel free to comment below all the best guys have a great week bye